It's time for another insufferable episode of the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. It's about bloody time! Hi everybody, this is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And we are here to welcome you to a... Another... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to call I mean, it's an episode of the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. But it's going to be different than our usual episode. It's not a That Gets My Goat, but it also is not going to include a story. So maybe it still is a That Gets My Goat. I don't know, but whatever. We're going with it. So those of you who are hoping for a story, well, we'll have something less than a story, but something more than no story. <laughs> okay. It's going to be... Is that a riddle? <laughs> yeah, maybe they can figure it out by the time we get to it. Uh, and maybe they'll understand what I was talking about. But yeah, it'll be short. Um, but yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about stories and about writing and about uh, ideas. Yeah. So we're going to go from there. Now, this was your idea, Rish. So uh, where do you want to go from here? Well, it was my idea, but you played a part in the idea and... If you drop the ball, then the ball is dropped. I didn't drop the ball. I never drop the ball. We, we've been talking uh, since Hope on the Rocks Home on the aired. Range. Since <laughs> the last episode was Hope on the Rocks by uh, Adam Gifford. A.W.? A and W. Giffords. And it's a uh, restaurant. We just thought that if we sort of made the show easier, that we could put out more. Shows and I, I, I know that a lot of people want us to put out more shows, and you know that's flattering. It's good. I did. I was bitching before we started recording that I don't do the Dune for them. I do it for us. Uh huh. Which is the, probably the reason why it's still going. I would say. But at the same time, you know that we have fans and there are people that like to hear our voices. It is great and it it's encouraging, and so yeah, I want to put out more episodes and. We did record a story right before what we're doing right now. So there is another story forthcoming. It's just, it's going to still take, even with just us, if we did all of the parts ourselves, you still have to cut out all the mistakes I make, probably put music in there, maybe do sound effects. I don't know. And that takes time. We just can't do it, you know, in seven days or eight days or 10 days like we used to do it and say, okay, next, we'll see you next week, kids. So I was like, ah, oh, shoot, well, it's probably going to be a while before that episode airs. Wish we could do something. And you had you had blogged about this thing that your kid did. And uh, in my mind, it was just like, wow, that is messed up. That's disturbing. There's got to be a story in that. And so I called you today and I said, hey, there's got to be a story in that. You, I, I want you to come up with a story that you could tell based on that, a story that you could write. And maybe I will as well. I just, I, if, if you go ahead and explain this weird thing that your kid is into <laughs> okay so i'll give you the audio version of the story and hopefully it's better than the uh, written word because i probably didn't do a very good job so the other day my wife and my oldest son they had gone on a trip and i uh they got home uh and i picked them up from the airport their plane came in at like eleven thirty. now my son has to get up uh, god awful early to go to school it's it's insanely early he has to be up. I, th I wake him up at 6 a.m. every morning so that he can make it to his bus. His bus comes somewhere around 7. I think his school doesn't actually start until like 7.45 or somewhere. He always gets there with like 30 minutes to go before school actually starts. But still, they run the bus that early. So, so yeah, he was going to get a short night of sleep. And my wife, who works the early morning shift, always gets a short night of sleep. She actually didn't have to get up early the next day because she had the next day off because, you know, getting home at 1130 and then going to work at 130 or whatever wasn't going to work out. So she had the next day off and she was looking forward to the opportunity to sleep in. I did not have the day off, so I was going to have to get up normal and uh, get all the kids ready for school. And our youngest four-year-old, he doesn't sleep in really there are times when he sleeps later but that day wasn't one of them so uh yeah he woke up at i don't know we'll say eight ish somewhere around there 
And I grabbed him and pulled him out of our room before he woke up my wife. And I took him downstairs and I put on a TV show for him to watch and got him some breakfast and all that kind of stuff, which is what I do most every day. But usually on the day that my wife's home from work, you know, she's up helping him, taking care of him. But today, you know, she wanted to sleep and I was trying to help her out with that. So I got him something to watch on TV so that he would be uh, interested while I took my shower. I went upstairs, I got in the shower, and I was in the shower for, pff, I don't know, like a minute or two. And then all of a sudden, I hear my wife screaming. She's like, what? What's what's wrong? Oh, don't worry, I'm coming. And I was just like, what the heck? And I could hear her like banging around. I swear she probably like jumped and like fell out of bed and was banging around trying to get up onto her feet and run down the stairs to him. Because apparently he was screaming his freaking head off. It was not just like a little, you know, ah, I stubbed my toe or I don't know, something, something relatively small. He was freaking out. He was screaming this blood curdling scream like he w was dying. And my wife was freaked out. She didn't know. And, and, and so she went running. I couldn't even hear him scream, to tell you the truth, because uh, I had the shower on and it, it was preventing me from hearing that. But uh, yeah, I, I did hear my wife rumbling, bumbling, stumbling down the stairs. And I sat there for a little while kind of listening to see, because I figured if it was, you know, something serious... She would quickly be calling my name and, you know, asking me to get out of the shower and come help. Um, and I kept listening and listening and finally I, re I figured, eh, must be safe. I can finish my shower out just fine. I didn't want to go rushing out, you know, with her because I have to get out of the shower and dry myself off and throw some clothes on before I go running down the stairs to find out what happened. And I didn't have that much time anyways because I had to be to work soon. So if I had to take two showers managed to get the one it would have been really dumb so yeah i finally finished my shower i get out i go over to uh the top of the stairs and i yell down to my wife and said hey <laughs> what was going on there what 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 was the deal and my wife kind of with a sigh says there was a bee yeah apparently my son has become deathly afraid of bees it's like some kind of a weird phobia with him he freaks out and it's not like the bees attack him he's never been attacked he's never been stung i think one of his little friends may have been stung once and uh maybe he heard the story from him or something like that and that's what got him started on being afraid of bees i don't know what the deal is but yeah anytime he hears a buzz he freaks out Oh my gosh, the bee, it's going to sting me. Anytime, and he'll be playing outside. He actually did that one time not too long ago. He was out in the backyard playing around. He was just kind of out there by himself. And then all of a sudden, my oldest son comes down. He's like, he's out there like crying like crazy. Did you know that? I was like, I look out there and yeah, I see him there crying way in the back corner of the of the yard. So I go out there and I was like, what's wrong? What Did you hurt yourself? And he's like, there was a bee. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> keep trying to teach him that, you know, bees, they don't, they, they don't just attack you. They're not going to sting you unless you give them a reason to sting you. So if a bee comes, just kind of get out of its way and it'll go on its way. But yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not sinking in. He's got this, a similar fear of bees to like people have of spiders. You know, some people just they freak out with spiders that you kill it kill that spider now kill it and it's just like but it's just a little spider and it's it's outside and it's you know you're like going to its house and st it's like you know somebody walking into your house and shooting you said i don't like humans what are they doing in here in this human house i don't know it's just there are a lot of people that are like that they just it, it's got to be dead if it's near them but spiders are good, you know, they, they kill all these other bugs and eat them and, you know, they keep them away from you. Don't you want to let the spider live? And he's like that with bees. He's just scared to freaking death of them. So that's the story. I just 
related the story of him, you know, ruining my wife's night's sleep and freaking out over a bee. And by the way, it wasn't a bee. The buzzing sound that he'd heard was a friggin' housefly. There was a housefly in the house that was buzzing around, and he immediately assumed it was a bee and freaked out. But it, yeah, it was just a fly. Um, and things are going to get bad here soon, because once we get into late summer, there are a lot of flies come around here and uh, the kids always leave the door open. So there's always flies in the house. So he's going to, yeah, he's going to be a mess by the time the summer is over. But yeah, that was the story that I related on the uh, blog that I wrote. And you read it and thought it was humorous, interesting, thought provoking. Well, yeah, I, I, all of those things. I mean, it was also very sad. Oh, I'm an empathetic person, but not toward your kid, <laughs> toward you. I mean, it's just like nobody deserves that. And and I, in my mind, and I, of course I wasn't there, but in my mind, he is screaming bloody murder in the way that like the worst kid in a toy store does or the kid in the mall, you know, where you're just like, holy crap, we get going to get a vasectomy right now, honey, <laughs> that kind of thing. And so, you know, I, but, uh, you know, he's your kid and. I think you're fond of him. I don't know. Somewhat. But I thought uh, there's got to be a story in this. There's got to be something that you can do in this. So I, I said, you know, we're going to get together tonight and uh, record. You should prepare something. You should write. You come up with some kind of angle on this where you could make a story from this. You know, that That's the, the seed that will lead to some kind of story. Because, you know, basically I'm just... You're up to your eyebrows in quicksand. And, and just I keep throwing you sticks and all that stuff. And... and Nothing has pulled you out of the quicksand. You just continue to sink. And so it's just like, oh, here's a vine. It's like, okay, I, I got a guy with a backhoe. And all you have to do is hold on to the, it's got like the little scooper thing. I don't know. I, should I go ask him what it's called? The, the, the piece? No, 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 no. I'm not going to ask him what it's called. Just grab onto the thing. He'll pull you out of the quicksand. And you just, no, you're not. So, uh, yeah, I, I said, come up with something. Maybe you could write a story inspired by that and 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 i thought well, and, and maybe i will too we'll do a broken mirror kind of thing where it's both based on the you know kids fear of bees or whatever I, oh yeah that would be cool because i'm always looking for an excuse to write another story so so yeah you told me that you said uh here's your your task for today and i think you wanted me to come up with two possibilities two stories and uh yeah then then uh after that conversation, I proceeded to have one of the most hellish days that I've ever had at my job. And I may have thought about it for two or three minutes. It was tough. But yeah, things have been like that a lot. So I haven't thought about it a lot. But, you know, I, I tried to think about it a little bit. And as after we recorded a story earlier, we went out and walked around the neighborhood, which is something we haven't done in a long time, but we talked about it. You mentioned this to me again, and I, I had thought a small amount about it because, you know, it was my task. It was my uh, my assignment. Um, I don't know. The idea of... I even thought of a, <laughs> of, of a title for it. I don't know if it works because it's ripping off something from years before. But I thought of calling it the birth of swarm or maybe just swarm, something having to do with swarm. But uh, yeah, I just like the idea. Uh, you talked about the one, uh, you know, B or we tie. I talked about the one B. But for some reason, the idea came to me of this person, this little child just being there, like somehow controlling the bees, being within a big swarm of bees. And the bees come to him and the bees talk with him. And, you know, they do what he says and they they love him. But it would be really interesting if that same person is afraid to death of bees and freaks out about it and can't handle it. It's like somebody who has this a superpower, but they're afraid of their superpower. You know, somebody who can fly, but they're scared of heights or something like that. Could be uh, really interesting to have that be the case with this poor child who has a way with bees. He's like Ant-Man, except for with bees. He can command them to do things and they can even talk to him and back and forth and 
but yeah, they just freak him out and it's a, it's a hard thing for him to deal with. And he's little, he's just a little, little bit boy. So he already doesn't understand things very well, doesn't understand the world very well, doesn't realize that a bee won't sting you if you leave it alone kind of a kid. I don't know, I thought that would be an interesting story. I don't have a beginning, middle, or an end for it, or I don't know what all I had to have ready for this. But uh, that was my pitch for you. Well, and that's all I wanted. Well, I wanted two. Yeah, I just thought it would be neat if we talked about it and then said, hey, what do you guys think? Because, you know, we, we enjoyed during the run of the Steve to have contests and to have people send us their thing. And I mean, the hard part is producing these stories, but it was always fun to hear somebody's take on, you know, everybody in the town is exactly the same or, or whatever the premise was. And so I just thought it would be fun if, if the listeners wanted to send their take. The, you know, it's like, OK, here's my idea for the the B story that, you know, that it, that takes your experience with your son and makes a story out of it. And I just thought, well, maybe for next episode, we'll, we can read all the ones that people send us. I mean, you know, you don't have to write a story, but it's just like, here's my take. And I, I'll do one too, where we just come up with, okay, well, what if the reason he's freaking out about the bees, it, you know, kind of thing. I, I, I just I thought it would be fun. I, I liked doing the contest stuff so much up until the contest was done and it's like okay all good now wait now we have to produce those <laughs> um and so yeah if there would just be some way like like I, other people have podcasts where people will call in fans will listeners will call in or they'll call the voicemail or they'll see, send emails and that just generates material for future podcasts you play this guy's voicemail and then you comment on it and boom there you've got another episode and at the end of that episode you say Here's our telephone number. Give us a call and we'll... Maybe what I want is one of those call-in radio shows <laughs> that I loved so much that, you know, where you feel like you're part of a community and you just, you know, they, the, the fans contribute to the show almost as much as the, the hosts of the show do themselves. And I just thought, well, okay, if this works and we get three or four or five or six people that are like, okay, well, what if the bees aren't really bees uh, to, to us they look like bees but to the kid you know kind of whatever and, and we're like wow that was really cool and then we was like hey well maybe we'll do this all the time we'll say okay here's a premise again kind of like a broken mirror contest only more informal and all that mm -hmm. and and it, but if also if there is a big reaction to it then that will be more encouraging to me to say okay we're going to do a real contest this time where you actually have to write the story like we used to do and all that. Right now, I'm just not. I'm not there. I, I I'm, I'm not ready to you're do. You're not prepared. It's, you're like somebody who had his heart broken by an awful woman, and you're not. You're not or ready. Man. That doesn't happen, does it? Uh, <laughs> now you're like the person who says a child is proclaimed king, but it is more than just a game. No, Turns out to be more than. No, you're supposed to say or queen. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, ready. A child is proclaimed king. Or queen. Yes, and it turns out to be more than just a game. Yeah, you're you're now that guy instead of the guy who had his heart broken. But going back to my other analogy, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're like a guy who's had his heart broken and, and you're afraid to dip your foot back into that pool again and, and try and go uh, dating. But uh, maybe you just need a, a good experience. You just need a good... Wait, 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 we are are we talking about contests or what are we talking about? Something. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, I, I I I got distracted there. You had fun doing the contests, right? Yeah. Remember when we did the pulling the names out of the hats for all those people? <laughs> that yeah. was really, really a high point of the show to me. I just enjoyed doing that so much. And if there'd just been an easy way for that contest to have, you know, been done within a year of us doing the drawing and all that stuff, I think we would have gone on to do many, many more. I don't know. And, and, and while we were doing our walk, I was talking about this uh, sort of a contest. What was it? I, I had an idea for an anthology of a fiction anthology. Uh huh. And because I've never done this before, I don't even know how you describe it, but where there's a premise and contributors send stories that are built around that premise for a collection of stories. And I came up with the scenario and I wrote the first story that sort of sets the stage 
for this. And we talked about it. Uh, was it on a That Gets My Goat or was it just in my blog? We talked about it in some context. Yeah, we mentioned it somewhere because we had a few people saying, hey, I want to do that. And Can I'm, I be one of the authors? I went as far as, like I said, to write that story. And then I recorded a Rish Outcast where I talked about where I came up with the idea and all that stuff. But none of that ever saw the light of day. I never shared the story with anybody, not even you. Just because the logistics of it just seemed so daunting. You know what I mean? Uh Um, I guess what we wanted to do was do sort of a Kickstarter campaign. So we would generate funds to pay all the people that sent us stories and, and to actually make a book. Right. That because was if, it was just, if it was just if it was just a Dune Steve contest, gosh, maybe it would have already happened because we know how to do that. Right. Um, but I just didn't know how to do the Kickstarter thing. And what if it fails? What if nobody sends stuff in? You know, I know you're laughing because what if, you know, they say I'm no good. Get out of here, kid. But you got no future. That's a real fear for me that never <laughs> goes away. Yeah. What if and, you threw a party and nobody came? Have you ever done that? It's horrible. I will never throw a party again. Have I ever done that? <laughs> okay, well, just let me put it this way. Did you read Lord of the Rings in high school or not? I was having sex in high school. <laughs> How did we get on this? Oh, it just that's sort of a contest kind of thing. It's something that I wanted to do. And if I had only had the wherewithal or the cojones or the push to actually do that, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. And the next one would have been easier and it would have been easier. And we'd be on the third or fourth one by now. But it's just, yeah, I, I, uh, the first one, that's hard. It's kind of like you said, dipping your foot back in the pool. It's like, I, you know, oh, it's too soon, too early since Ma, <laughs> too early since Agnes died. I, 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 it's too soon. Anyhow, B premise. If, yeah. if, if you're listening and you, you've got an idea of where that could go, send it to me. I just encourage, just get off your f***ing butt, your fat, pimply, lard ass once hey. in your life and send a f-ing email you know how hard you don't even have to send an email you can f-ing use your thumbs on your damn little smartphone that has so much love than your spouse or your children sorry um and also listeners he, he he has something to say to you guys now that he's done talking to me uh Send you know over, over yeah send, send over a submission send or over it? a premise no don't send it a submission send it to editor okay so uh, send over a premise if you have one you can even better like Rish was talking about with the the call in show record yourself pitching your premise uh, that would be awesome we would play it and uh, you know respond to it as though we liked you. Yeah, uh, just send something our way and we'll we'll bring it up in our next episode. Or maybe the one after that. The yeah, next well, episode we, was pre-recorded a long well, time ago. Well, it is, you, you, in an upcoming episode, we, you know, we don't know how long these kind of things will be. But if you want to participate, don't just assume that other people are going to do it. You do it. Be the example for the other people who are like, wow, hey, I had this great idea was way better than his, but I didn't send it to those guys, so I'm not on the show. That's right. Don't be a guy. Be a man. Oh, hey, I like that. Let's get a t-shirt <laughs> made that says that. that. That's really solid, dude. You stole it from somewhere, didn't you? I did, yeah. That's from oh. Say Anything. Damn you. To know Lloyd Dobler is to love Lloyd Dobler. Uh, listen, one more s- s- request. If you know how Kickstarter works, and maybe Kickstarter is not the best way to do this, but I really would like to do that anthology thing. And I don't know. I mean, what, the thing that I don't want to do is to end up with there being like three stories in this collection. And I have to end up footing the bill and nobody ever benefits from it. And it just goes away. I just like like a good solid five or six, seven stories and we can put it out there and we do like an audio version if there is interest. Not as a way to get rich, but as a way to just try something and have it be successful for once. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, if you know how those kind of things work, uh, or if you'd like to be our fund manager or whatever the hell you call it, just let us know. And that's not all, folks. There's one other thing that Rich Outfield wants to talk about. Yes, if you order now, we'll throw in this 
cake batter slash artificial inseminator. Ooh, um, I'm interested. Tell me more. I don't know. Also makes Julian fries. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I think I know where you're going, but I, I, I'm just, I'm not. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not self-serving enough. I, <laughs> All right. So hold on a second. I'm going to have to get California big. Do I have to get California big? Or can you we bring are in California, California big. Can I, we bring in California Rich, or do, do, does it just need to be California Big? I don't know. California Rich is kind of a tool. Yeah. And you've already heard normal Rich berate you for not writing. Can you imagine what California Rich would have to say? About you and your screaming bastard. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, we'll just we'll just bring in California Big to talk about it. California Big did a post on Facebook not too long ago in a similar vein, because... California Big knows that Rish Outfield, he, he doesn't have, I'm not sure what it is. I, I couldn't put a, a finger on it and say, you know, this is what Rish's problem is. He doesn't have a dong. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's, a, Check that's, this out. that's something else. But yeah, he, Rish is too humble. He's not able to toot his own horn. So here I am, California Big, to tell you about something that Rish has been doing. Now, you guys all know and love Rish. He writes great stories. You've heard a lot of them on the show. You love him. And he actually writes and records stories to sell. Nobody knows this because he's too afraid, too, well, sorry, too humble <laughs> to tell you about these stories. But somebody's got to tell you about them. And so that's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you about... His most recent project. You see, last year, we came up with this idea that we were both going to write novels following this uh, formula of a guy that uh, Rish had seen at a writer's conference. But before we could do that, Rish had to finish writing the story he was writing at the time. Well, this story turned out to be a novel in and of itself. What did it clock in at, Rish? What, 49,500 words? Yeah, just... Under 50,000. The Hugo Awards uh, classify anything over 40,000 words as a novel. So Rich had had to finish his novel before he could write his novel. But it was a psychological thing. I, I, now, you used the word humble, but I'm sure that there is a word psychologists use that is like the most negative version of humble. But also, yeah, psychologically, I got a lot of hangups. I knew I couldn't write a novel, but I could write a really long short story. <laughs> so that's what he did. He wrote this really long short story and he, and he finished it. And then we both went on to fail to write our novels. Spoiler alert. <laughs> that episode still hasn't aired. But uh... <laughs> since then, now he's typed up this novel of his. What is the story? It's called Into the Furnace, right? It is. Into the Furnace is the name of this novel. He's typed it up. Have you published it on uh, Amazon yet? Yeah, it's out there. Okay. I, in fact, somebody has to have bought a copy because today I saw where it ranks in uh, Amazon's total sales. <laughs> like, and oh, dear Lord, why did I ever look at that? No, today, right before you and I got together, I finished the audiobook and submitted it for publication on Audible. And so by the time this episode airs, it's out there. Exactly. It's out there. He finished. Now, you made a goal with yourself to finish this before the end of May. Is that or was it the end of April? It was before Captain America. Oh, before 3. Captain America 3. That's right. You had to finish before Captain America to show him that you're better than he is. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> But in a, in a humble way. Um, and so, yeah, he burned in the midnight oil. He was narrating this thing night and day, slaving over a hot microphone to finish this uh, book. And now it's ready. You can buy it uh, for your Kindle, I suppose, right? Because it's not like you can buy a printed out book of it, right? No, I, there are people that have expressed interest in a physical book. And it just seems unlikely that I, those, I will do that. Those people are always just interested in the physical. Can't they see Can, you for your mind? Yeah. What, I, <laughs> girls are always saying they like somebody with a sense of humor. But huh. but then when you whip it out and they laugh. And they leave. Then they leave. The, Doesn't make uh, sense. 
there there is some way that Amazon does this self publishing print on demand kind of thing. Uh huh. And I suppose if there were interest, I would do that. I mean, you know, to have a copy of your own book on the shelf with your name on it or whatever would be pretty great. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, one day that would be a neat thing to do, a neat goal. It's something that I ought to look into. But again, just like the podcast, I didn't do it for them. I did it. For me, I, I I said I want to be a writer. I want to publish a novel. I yeah. I said I would do it, and I did it. So yeah, I sort of want a copy on my shelf. But more than that, I want to be able to say I actually yeah. did it. And so that is out there. Um, in the back of my mind, I thought that maybe foolishly, that maybe my mom would want to hear the audio book. <laughs> and so I thought, gosh, how, how did, remember when you used to be able to burn CDs? How did we do that? I couldn't, I can't remember. It's not been a long time, but I've already forgotten how that works. And I just thought, oh, I wonder how many CDs that would be. So yeah, I finished it today. It was exactly five hours, 59 minutes, 40 seconds long. So 30 seconds shy of six hours, which is good because Abigail Hilton told me that anything over five hours is a full credit on Audible. And anything under, well, you know, you're wasting your credit. Yeah, so that's a good, she's, she's, a good she's Audible credit thing. She's talked about that thing. for years, that credit thing. And I, yeah, I, 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 my, my attitude is, um, you know, why buy on credit if you've got the cash? Yeah, I hear um, you. So California Big is here to tell you oh, okay. that that book is available and you really want to read this book. Or listen to it, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your boat. Float this. I get way more money for the audio version than I do for the text version. So buy the audio version. All right, so there you go. The audio version is definitely the preferable way. And it took you a lot of effort. Um, above and beyond just writing the story. Now you had to read the whole story out loud. That's uh, not the hard part. Well, yeah. I'm Editing. <laughs> Editing the audio book. That's the thing. <laughs> the worst part of it all. Yeah. Well, the narrating and the editing, all that on top of just, you know, I mean, the book was done. It was there. It was out. It was ready to go. But then you had to go that extra step. So if you, I mean, we all love to listen to Rish's voice. It's so melodious and wonderful. Just lulls you into a nice, it sends you to that happy place where, uh, what's the name of the girl that was in Happy Gilmore? Julie Bowen. You know that place where where Julie Bowen comes walking out in the white lingerie with the thigh-high stockings and two pitchers of beer? Uh, you know, it, it sends you to that kind of a place. So, so yeah. Uh, California Rich wishes it to be made known that we're talking about the young Julie Bowen. Yeah. <laughs> the 1996 Happy Gilmore Julie Bowen. Uh, anyways. That's so mean. <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes uh, I hate California. Really. He, uh, he is kind of a douche. But yeah, it's available. And uh, this is the, the big commercial for it. Uh, go out, buy it, check it out, enjoy it, love it, stroke it, feel it, touch it. You actually probably can't do that with any of the things that you buy. They're just digital phantoms. You can't touch feel stroke or love it we could love it i guess you could do that again i don't want to sound self-serving and yet every other person on the face of the earth does and so i'm doing myself an uh what's the opposite of a favor a disfavor <laughs> by not talking about it but I, should we talk about what the book is should we oh yeah let's give them a, a quick sneak peek of it. okay so you guys, if you're friends with us on Facebook, then you probably saw the most massive, most commented upon post ever in Doonstief history. It was this post where Rish put up the three options for the cover to this to this novel. Uh, it was the same picture, but with three different font styles, and everybody got to vote on it, which one they liked best. I threw together three different uh, kind of font styles for the cover of this novel. I asked Big to do two, one that sort of had a Western font and one that sort of had a fantasy font, and Big didn't do it. But two days later, he did send me nine <laughs> covers, you know, to make up for it. 
And I was just like, nine? Oh, no. And so I narrowed it down to the three that I liked the best. And I put the three on Facebook and said, hey, guys, which of these three do you like the best? You don't know what the novel is. You've never read it. You don't know anything about it. But just what do you viscerally like the best? And suddenly people started commenting. It was weird. People were coming out of the freaking woodwork. People that were not my Facebook friends somehow saw this post and were voting on it. Uh, So I went to bed like 4 a.m. because I just kept watching. And, you know, there was a bing every time somebody commented on it. And when I went to bed, there were over 40 posts. Uh, And by the time I got up the next morning, okay, afternoon, there were 90 something on there. And it, to me, that just, that floored me. That blew me away. It, uh, you know, it touched me in a special place. Yeah. Every time it went bing, touched you again. You know, a, a boy has needs. <laughs> so the thing that was interesting was the one that got the most votes was neither the Western nor the fantasy font. But you had sent one that was kind of like a, I mean, to me, it was a horror looking font. I don't know what you thought it was, but Immediately, I was just like, ooh, that's like a horror version. And that's the one that got all the votes. And that's the one that I liked best anyway. So I was like, woohoo. So that night, before I went to sleep at like 4.05 a.m., I hit publish with that cover. So there you go. So the cover that you see is uh, you see a, a few mesas or buttes or whatever you want to call them out in the desert. There's... Three large, uh, they're just, you know what a mesa is. It's like the hill that just kind of rises straight up out of the desert and then it's flat on the top or flat-ish. So there's three of these and then on the ground in front of these things is a bunch of skulls. Skulls, skulls, skulls. So there's skulls there, so you know something's going on. Now, one of the things that I had to put on the cover somewhere was the subtitle a weird western to give people the idea that hey this isn't just a western okay this isn't just clint eastwood or john wayne or somebody going out and having to shoot him up in the okay corral this is more than just a western this western involves something more that's one of the reasons why we decided to do the fantasy font as one of the options was just you know people look at it because they say that your your cover has to tell your reader what the story is basically the genre of the story. And yeah, you have no experience publishing what you write because you're a butthole. But oh, sorry, that was California Rish again. <laughs> I, uh, no, let me handle this, man. You you tact. Look it up. You do, however, have t- experience doing covers for the Dune Stephen covers for that gets my goat. And because of that, you have a real strong eye for visually getting across, without words, a feeling. And that's what a cover is supposed to do. And we've both been to panels at writing conferences where they're, you know, they're talking about self-publishing. And I think I've been to a panel that was just about covers. And they talked about, you know, this cover I did on my own, and this cover my brother-in-law did, and this cover I paid $500 for somebody else to do. And which one do you think is the best? Well, you're all wrong, because somebody is supposed to be able to look at your cover and get a feeling of what they're going to be reading. You know, Basically, they should be able to judge the book by that cover, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, and... You know, for years and years and years, they said, don't judge a book by its cover. But I think in in my lifetime, that has totally changed. Well, it's um, it's when they're speaking uh, metaphorically that they tell you to do that. Oh, but but with literally. actual books. Yeah. I mean, you got to judge it. What do you how are you else are you going to judge it? You got to read them all before you can judge. I mean, seriously, the, the library is really big. It's full of a lot of books. You can't read them all. You don't have that long of a life. It's the same thing with self-publishing. It's like anybody, an 11 year old kid. You know, or, or, or somebody and who, who barely has a grasp on English or Christopher Paolini can publish their own books and just, you know, with a snap of the fingers, it's out there. It's available for your dollar or your yen or your Deutschmark. Yeah. They're not called Deutschmarks anymore. They're, they're on the euro. That's um, true. Sorry. Uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm getting off track. Your pound sterling. You need to be able to say... Ooh, I think I'll like this, or I think ooh, that 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 one looks interesting, just based on that image. And it, you know, it's not fair because 
maybe you're a fantastic writer and you're just not good at Making layouts and all that stuff, or, or, you know. But I've <clears> been <throat> to panels where they talk about, you know, that there are thousands of pictures of chicks with heaving bosoms and stuff like that that you can use for free or for a nominal fee as your cover. And, you know, it's just like they're all there for the take. Look at the bosoms, sir. <laughs> Look. OK, now now you're creeping okay. me out. Stop looking at the bosoms. They're out there and, and you know, they're, they're eye catching. They're 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 just they're people that do this well and they're willing to give you or rent you their abilities and all that stuff. But at the same time, yeah, me, the guy who is not California Rish, feels like, well, you know, I was. They should buy it because, you know, I, I worked hard on it or because, you know, I think it's a good story or whatever it is, uh, which is just simply not true. I mean, un- unless, you know, they've listened to us on a podcast for hundreds of episodes <laughs> for free and they like our writing style or reading style or like us. And so it's like, OK, I'll give that time a to, shot. Yeah, yeah, time, time to, uh, to cash in. It that favor um yeah uh so the the cover's really good you had a friend do it who's a great artist and it looks really nice and yeah he'd never done anything like that before i I guess i can see a little bit of what it would be like to be friends with me with this guy (laughs) the hell that it would be to be a friend of yours well but this guy's really really (laughs) handsome and can you imagine me but really really handsome no no i can't either he has been drawing for all of his life but he doesn't ever share his work with other people and he'd never published anything he'd never done a cover he'd never you know what i mean yeah it really surprised me i was just like wow that's so cool what what other things have you done and like no you're the first person i've shown this stuff that i've drawn and i was like no come on and I, I was i was the only person i've talked to other people at work and they're like really he draws <laughs> so uh he did this oh and and i i told him i have to have it on friday it's friday captain america comes out <laughs> and so i got an email with the attachment from him at five something in the morning on friday he said here's the thing and i know it's not exactly what you asked for you don't have to use it if you don't like it, but I'll do better next time. Just think of me for your next project. And it broke my heart <laughs> that he would say this. That sounded like something I would say. You did this for free and you're apologizing for it? Plus, it's really good. Yeah. So, it's a weird Western. It has a nice cover. And uh, you want to give a... a quick summary uh, uh just an intro to it without giving away the uh the important thing that you refuse to give away on the cover see and i want to talk about that too dude i have flogged this horse so many times i feel like one of those guys on the press junket who just doesn't want to talk about harry potter 7 again he's like oh we've got one more next year too can we please not talk about magic and hogwarts and voldemort can we talk about football, please? Can we talk about Leicester? That was really something special, oh, right? We got to talk about Harry match? Potter. Oh. I feel like that one of those people on the junket that keeps asked, getting asked the question is like, "So, did you like kissing your co-star?" No, no, I didn't. I hate her. <laughs> She's a. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, yeah, I was kind of hoping that you would take over and talk about what it was about and what you remembered of the origin of the book or any of that stuff, because I've told this okay. over and well, I over will, and over. I will tell some of it, but you're going to have to, you know, jump in and supply me with details because, I mean, I didn't write the book and I haven't read it yet either because, you know, oh, you don't share you them with me. Best. Uh, I hope your kid wakes up thinking there's a bee in his room. He probably will. It was, I guess, to, last year... At uh, we went to a comic book convention and we were sitting in a room and I don't know, we were listening to like David Farland and a couple other uh, writers doing their. It, it, we were listening to California David Farland and California versions of all these other writers, you know, being blowhards and talking about how great their stuff was and all this stuff. I don't know. At a certain point, you kind of roll your eyes a little bit when you're listening to that kind of stuff, and you and you 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 wander off. Your mind wanders a little, 
And so Rish shows me his little notebook that he brought with him to take notes. And on the side of it, he wrote, A a new sheriff comes to town and discovers uh, blank is killing the townspeople. Blank, of course, is is uh, something that we're not going to reveal because you know it's a bit of a mystery for a large portion of the right. Book. And millennials aren't going to remember who Mel Blank was. I mean, he was right. he was important to our parents' generation, <laughs> and at the very end of his life, you know, was kind of when we were coming up. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that was for your groaner. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> I thought that was Kermit on his wedding night. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, he shows me this, and I thought, oh, that's. That sounds like an interesting idea. And then I don't think you thought about it again for months. You'd forgotten about it entirely. And then I think somehow you came across that just looking through your old notebook for something else. And you're like, hey, I forgot about this idea. This would be a good idea. I should do that. Yeah. Then you jumped on it. And I here and there you would tell me about, oh, yeah, I was talking to my dad who was really into Westerns. And I was asking him about what you could use to blow something up with. Can you really light a trail of, uh, you know, black powder powder, (laughs) until it gets to the keg and then it explodes? Does that really work or is that just BS? And, you know, you had all these questions that you would, you would ask your, your dad who was Mr. Western. He's seen like every West. He's, he hasn't even been to like the Western convention they have in like Monument Valley or something. Yeah. And that every year, I guess there are fewer <laughs> attendees because the Western has seen its day. And, <laughs> because the fans and are now dying it's, off. It's the kids of these actors and, and people that worked on the movies that are there talking about their parents. And it's, it, there's something kind of romantic about that, though, about the, uh, you know, the, the old Hollywood, the way they used to make movies and, and stuff. And, and he knows all sorts of details because he watches. Um, which is, is it TCM, the one that has the Robert Osborne come out and tell you about the movie you're about to see and give you a little trivia and controversies that were going on. And originally, Claude Rains was to have played this part, but he got syphilis, you know, and, and that sort of thing. Where they Anyway, my dad remembers all this stuff, <laughs> and so he mentions it. And I don't know. I think that kind of stuff is, is cool. And I, I do the same thing, just not with Westerns, just doing with, you know modern kind of movies or not even modern anymore i mean i talk about a movie from 1984 like it wasn't (laughs) yeah like it wasn't 30 years old you know he did his research there you go uh (laughs) so yeah rish put this story together about a, a sheriff who comes to a new town gets a job as the sheriff in a new town he's i think already a disrespected or a is that the right word a disgraced sheriff from some other town he was kind of let go where he was before and and you know the only place he could really go to was to this place which for some reason they had they needed a new sheriff the last one had a big bushy beard but uh he's disappeared that is such an obscure reference i love it (laughs) anyways so yeah he shows up there and he finds out that there's something weird going on yeah there's a mystery and I don't know, it's really hard because if I just gave away the mystery, that right there is the reason you should read the book. But then the mystery you know is mean? spoiled. But then the mystery is spoiled. But if I told you what the, 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 the blank, twist is, what, blank the, what was. Mel Blank is. Now see, he was the voice of all of the, the Looney Tunes Yeah, he was Bugs Bunny. Then maybe somebody out there would go, oh, hey, that, that, yeah, that sounds kind of cool. I'd read that. But it's not revealed until partway through the book. I mean, they, they, it's a good like 40% in before you f- actually discover what this mystery is, right? Something like that? Maybe yeah, 30? I, I, yeah, it's, it's probably the, uh, the one third point. But I, I just, it, I'm hesitant to give away that just because uh, I, I, I hope that it when it is revealed, you go, ah. And then you're excited about it because, you know, oh, cool. Yeah. But yeah. we'll just put it this yeah, way. Yeah, I, I can't we talk put, about it, dancing around it. We put a fancy, one of the options, there was a Western option, and the, the one that Rich called horror, which wasn't, it was it was just a roughed up version of letters. It's actually a font called 321 Impact, 
which takes the font impact and then it just kind of roughs it up makes it look all splattered and kind of scratchy around the edges and rough and all that kind of stuff but anyways that's the one he called the horror we also did a fantasy font so just think horror and fantasy and western put those all together and that's what you're getting from this book so you should check it out if you're into any of those things and especially if you're into all of those things enjoy it you know hopefully you will it's heck it's almost six hours you know while you're commuting to work you could listen to that thing and be a a totally different experience that commute it wouldn't totally suck like it usually does so that's the pitch uh you know it's rich's first novel so i figured we ought to really uh do it up on the show and um uh, Hopefully you guys would find it worthwhile to check it out. Right. There, there are a lot more people that listen to the Dune Steve than that read my blog. Yeah. Or that would look at my Facebook post. Hey, I published a book. And so, yeah, you're doing me a favor by uh, twisting my arm and making me talk about this. But um, one last thing before we go. And, and, and you, if you're a listener of the show, you know that Big is terrified not of bees, <laughs> but of people at his job finding out that he is a podcaster. More so than something running over his children. More so than something happening to one of his balls. <laughs> okay. His co-workers finding out that he has a podcast because it is so shameful. <laughs> but that sort of infected me in the eight years that we've been doing the Dune Steve I started getting into my head, too, that, okay, you know, me being a writer, me being a podcaster and all that stuff, that is a dirty, dirty thing. <laughs> and, it, you know, I lost me a job in the past. Maybe I should keep that private. And so, you know, at work, people would ask me, well, what are you doing in those notebooks? Or you're just like, oh, now you have a laptop. What are you doing on the laptops? And I would say, I'm, I'm, I'm making a list of people I will one day kill. <laughs> no, uh, I, 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 I'm trying to be a writer. And... There have been a couple people that are like, oh, I, I want to read something that you've written. And here it comes. The patented Big Anklevich fear. <laughs> because, yeah, I, I have a blog and I have a podcast and I have a solo podcast and I write and I'm, I have to be me in those and just be open and speak my mind and not be afraid of some coworker misconstruing or, or getting back to the boss or, or any of that stuff. I mean, we've all heard stories of somebody that, you know, posts on their Facebook or on their Twitter that, you know, my boss is a douche nozzle and it gets back to the boss and Ooh, there you go. It's over. So I would always be really hesitant to share any of the stuff that I wrote or luckily I had a name out there that they didn't know. I have another life that they don't know about. Which is kind of cool. Is I've got a secret identity. I, you know, I'm the devil of Hell's Kitchen or whatever. <laughs> and so, you know, for so long, I just got away with that. I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm writing. I, I don't really publish. I, I don't really share with people. I don't, uh, you know. But there were a couple of coworkers that are like, I want to read your book. I want to read what you, I, I, oh, I, there's one that's like super friendly about it it's like oh i want to say i knew him when which is nice but uh i still wasn't going to <laughs> share any of this stuff it's just yeah it's, it's safer not to we, we 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 both had these experiences you know you've shared something that you've written with your wife and she re re reacted unfavorably to it and you're like oh okay and and you, and you don't want that to happen you want to just be able to creatively express yourself without fear of somebody judging you or misjudging you mm -hmm. and that and so for years i've been able to keep this a secret and people are like hey are you on facebook friend me on facebook and i was like well, yeah, i don't really do facebook <laughs> and then this book came out <laughs> and the wife of the artist of the cover posted it on facebook as her status that you know my husband did this cover art you know for this book for this you know this guy 
And she happens to be Facebook friends with one of the women at work who is Facebook friends with all of the people at work. (laughs) And so within two or three days, suddenly everybody knew what my book was called, what I was called, that my stuff is out there and that they could buy it if they want to and that I have a podcast that they can listen to. And it's just like, oh. Because I've, I've said things. I've called my coworkers mentally ill before. <laughs> I've talked about coworkers that were twins and how fun that would be before. <laughs> you know, things like that. We're just like, oh, ooh, oh, I did say that. Oh. So now you're worried. No, I'm, I'm, I, I don't care. I, they, I, they need me more than I need this job at this point. But at the same time, it just, ugh, the thought that the, the jig is up, you know, the... The genie is out of the bottle. Isn't that what they say? So there's something. They yeah, say, you can't put it back in either. Yeah, and so that was a shame, you know, for, for eight years that Dune Steve was an anonymous thing. And I got that job the same year we started the Dune Steve. For eight years. <laughs> I had a good thing, and now it's all over. Okay. So there's that. Yeah, so far uh, nobody wants to know anything about me, so I don't have to worry so much. It's like, oh, you write things? Oh, good. You wait, what <laughs> now? You would have to be writing for somebody to look over your shoulder and say, are you, What are you doing? Yeah, I guess that, would be, uh, that would be true. So many times, co workers and stuff would be like, Oh, am I in your book? Name a character after me. And it's like, All right, there is a child molester that needs a name. You asked for it. <laughs> you never know if people are going to respond favorably to that or, or not. And you run the risk. We, as people, run the risk of having something that we write be misconstrued or or perceived as being about our family members or our friends or, you know, that, that sort of thing. You know, you write a story about two guys who are buddies and they instantly go, oh, which one is you? And which one, you know, that kind of thing. Or a guy who's got marital problems. And it's like, oh, clearly, you know. And I think, think of how many times somebody's written a song and they're like, oh, no, this has to be about. This is about his girlfriend. This that is one about, who you know, did this yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, I know it. And it doesn't have to be. I mean, a lot of times singers don't even write their own songs. Yeah. But people still go, oh, gosh, that has to be. Which Jonas Brother was that about? You know, kind of thing. <laughs> and so it, it's just, it's funny, but it's probably something that has been. That has plagued artists forever. And so there's that. But still, you know, I would hope that people can separate the writer from the, the fiction. I mean, if, if we're grown-ups here. <laughs> I know not everybody is a grown-up. But, you know, there have been times when I've read stuff by you or by others. And I wonder, what, was that based on me? Was that me? <laughs> and I certainly do that. You tell me a story about something that happened to you, and it shows up in one of my stories. You can't help but go, oh, <laughs> then is the whole thing me? Am I? You know, that kind of thing. Wait, I don't do that that much. It's funny. I remember one time when I wrote a story, and there was a character that was somewhat based on you, but he was also a total ladies' man, and you kept complaining. At, I gave you the story to read, to get notes from you. You had me, oh. then you lost. You're like, you got to stop doing this, because I want to think that this guy's based on me, but every time this happens, then it shatters my notions. <laughs> so, yeah, we all do it. I, like, like the story that I just finished, I named the main character after the new girl at work. Is she the new girl at work? No. But if that story found its way into her hands, how, would that be flattering? Would that be a violation in some way? Or is it like, ooh, what? That main character and has the same name as me. And all that stuff. I mean, there are people that would be flattered. There would be people that would be honored. There would be people that would be like, wow, that's so cool. That We've had it happen on our show where we take... People that donate to the show and we yeah. name characters after them and all that stuff. But there are probably other people that are just like, hey, I didn't. That's no. <laughs> and all that stuff. And so, yeah, I guess it's dangerous. The, the anonymity that the Internet gives and that podcasting gives, you know, is not complete. I, I saw you look at the recorder. We've been going way long. Okay. Well, I hope people got their money's worth in this episode. No. Me too. 
but probably not. Even if they've never given any money, they didn't get their money. Oh, straight. yeah, that's true. <laughs> they didn't get their money. All right, so we've been going for a long time. We'll go ahead and put a rest to this one. This is as long as a regular episode that has a story, and it did not. So, <laughs> although I did tell a story about my son being scared by bees, so it's kind of like yes. I had a story. Yeah, I think so. Maybe I should give that a title. The Birth of Swarm. Okay, there you By go. By B.D. Anklevich. Let's put some nice Kevin McLeod music there and scene. Nice. <laughs> the, uh, the address, once again, is editor at doonsteef.com. And I'm not messing around. I ain't playing, as California Rish would say. I want you to send us some of your ideas. Just, just express yourself creatively for once. That's right. You can't play a player. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Yeah. Uh, what? I, I no idea. I, I read it on a bumper <laughs> sticker. Okay. <laughs> on a car with a California license plate. Yeah, of course it did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. And, uh, yeah, if you're interested to get in on any of this stuff, send us a line. Uh, we will um, We'll try to get back to you. Or use your stuff on the show, whichever. Uh, yeah. So, there you go. We're going to call it a night. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And I'm California Rish Outfield. Yeah. He had nothing to contribute at all, except for his name. Yeah. And that accent. Contribute which is these. so very non-Californian. <laughs> so, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you later. Good night. Eat it. Okay. Stop. The Dune Steve is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Take two. Give you the audio version of the blog. Because you can't see the actual version of the blog because it's only on my little personal blog that only goes out to my family. It's basically like my journal, this yeah, thing. You, you don't have to tell them that. I'm just saying you can... I'm going to tell them the story, though. Oh, right, right. But I, I, we don't want them to go looking for that blog, do we? I doubt they'll find it. Okay. Maybe they will. I don't, if they do, I don't really care. Okay. Unless they're psycho. That would be bad. Nice one, 08OT.